Assalamualaikum dear students I hope all of you are doing well Today we are going to start lecture number 2 which is from topic 11.2 and in this lecture we will discuss electric field and its intensity and representation of electric field lines Before going to start our lecture I would like to share a quotation with you let your smile change the world, but don't let the world change your smile. The concept of field theory was introduced by Michael Faraday. He stated that the charge Q produces an electric field in the space surrounding it, and when a test charge Q0 is brought in its field, then it exerts a force F on it. The electric field around a charge is like a sphere in within which other charges are influenced by it and the existence of electric field can be proved by bringing a test charge Q0 into its field. We can define the electric field as any region around a charge in which an electric test charge experiences an electric force. And the force F experienced by a test charge Q0 is given by the following equation in which F is the magnitude of force experienced by a test charge. Q0 is the amount of charge on a unit positive charge while E is the amount of electric field intensity. field so it is characterized by its strength and the direction at every point in space the strength and direction of electric field can be determined by placing a unit positive charge in that field the strength of the field at a point in space determines the amount of force that a charge will experience if it is placed at that point and the direction in which the unit positive charge move or tend to move is the direction of the electric field. And a single vector quantity containing information about the field strength and its direction at that point is denoted by the electric field intensity. So thus, the field strength is the magnitude of the force expressed by the unit positive charge placed at that point. As you can see in this image, if we consider the source charge as the positive charge Q and we place a unit charge at these different points, so the unit charge will experience a force of repulsion because of the similar charges and this test charge will tend to move away from the source charge. which represents the direction of electric field line for the positive charge which is directed radially outward and these lines represent the electric field strength since the lines are closer near to the charge it means the strength is strong near to the surface of the charge and as we move away from the charge these field lines tends to move away from each other which tells as we move away the strength of the electric field decreases and the arrows determine the direction of the field at every point in space. If a unit positive charge Q0 experiences a force F due to the electric field of charge Q 
then we can define the intensity of an electric field at any point is the force per unit positive charge placed at that point and mathematically we can write down the equation for the electric field intensity as force per unit positive charge where E is the electric field intensity, F is the force and Q0 is the charge of the positive test charge. is a vector quantity and the test charge is so small that it does not distort the original field due to the primary source. The SI unit of electric field intensity is Newton per coulomb or volt per meter. In order to find out the field intensity due to a point charge Q, a unit test charge is placed at a distance r from the original charge which is q and the coulomb force which is experienced by the unit positive test charge due to the field of a point charge will be given by f is equals to k q q naught divided by r square where q is the charge of the source charge while Q0 is the charge on the unit positive test charge and R is the distance between these two charges. In the vector form the force will be given as F is equal to K Q Q0 divided by R square times the unit vector R. And the direction of electric field and the electric force will be same. So we can define the electric field intensity as E is equal to F over Q0 where F is the coulomb force between the two charges which is K Q Q0 divided by R square divided by Q0 times the unit vector R. So we get the electric field intensity as K Q over R square times the unit vector R. From this equation, you can see that the strength of the field is proportional to the magnitude of the source charge. The field does not depend on the magnitude of the point test charge. It only depends on the magnitude of the source charge. And its strength decreases as the test charge moves away from the source charge because the electric field intensity is inversely proportional to the distance, the square of the distance. Electric field lines can be represented by the imaginary lines and these imaginary lines are named as the electric lines of force. In reality, these lines are not present around the charge, but for our understanding, we can draw these imaginary lines to better understand the presence of the electric field surrounding a unit charge. In case of the unit positive charge, the arrow indicates the electric field at different point and the direction of these arrows is radially outward for the positive charge and these arrows are radially inward for the negative charge and these lines are called the electric field lines which increases as we move radially inward and decreases as we move radially outward in the field for both the cases in the positive charge and also for the negative charge. So the drawing lines around a charge helps us in visualizing the field.
and the negative charges which are placed at a certain distance from each other. The field line starts from the positive charge and terminates at the negative charge. There are some points in the field where the resultant intensity is equal to the sum of the intensities due to the positive charge and due to the negative charge and its direction is along the tangent to the field where at some points the resultant intensity is zero and these points are known as the neutral point where electric field is zero and these regions are present in between the same charges either the positive two charges or the negative charges. Now, the electric field lies between the charged parallel plates. The left plate is distributed uniformly with the unit positive charges and the right plate is distributed uniformly with the negative charges. The field line starts from the positive plate and terminates at the negative one. The reason is that the direction of electric field intensity is the direction in which the force acts on a unit positive charge. If the plates are not of infinite length, then the field lines at the end of the plate will be little bulging out and the field at the ends of the plate is called the fringing field since it is not straight. Now the last one which is about the electric lines of force on the metal surface. Suppose that a positive charge Q is placed near a metal plate, the positive charge will attract the negative charges in the metal plate resulting in the motion of these charges until some of them reach that surface of the metal which is near to the charge Q. Thus the field lines will start from the positive charge and will end on the negative charges of the metal plate. Furthermore, these lines are always perpendicular to the metal surface and the electric lines of force cannot pass through the conductor. Therefore, electric field is zero inside a conductor. Similarly, if we bring a negative charge near to the metal surface, now in this case the positive charges will be attracted by this negative charge and the positive charges will come to the surface of the metal plate. And again in this case the field lines will originate from the positive charge and they will end on the negative charges. And also these field lines will be always perpendicular to the metal surface. The electric lines of force have the tendency to contract its length. This explains the attraction between oppositely charged bodies. Summarize the properties of electric field lines as Electric field lines originate from positive charges and end on negative charges. The tension to a field line at any point gives the direction of the electric field at that point. The lines are closer where the field is strong and the lines are farther apart where the field is weak. And no two lines cross each other. This is because the electric field has only one direction at any given point. And if the lines cross, it means the electric field could have more than one direction, which is not possible. So these are the properties of the electric field line. I hope you have enjoyed the today's lecture. Please 
you can write your question in the comment section below. See you tomorrow in the next lecture with a new topic. Till then, take care and Allah Hafiz.